Today I'm back with my electric car from the 1980s. I want to continue fixing and improving it. And we're going to start by continuing off where we left last time. A bunch of people had commented after I had changed the headlights to LEDs that I should also change the taillights. So let's start by seeing how much electricity the parking lights take right now. Let's change the rear lights to LEDs, see how much of a difference that makes, and then we'll move on to the next project. Just like last time, I have my ammeter hooked up, and right now the lights are taking 7 amps. I only have the parking lights turned on, but there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 parking lights on. And the incandescent bulbs for the instruments are on as well. Now with the door and the buzzer and everything going on, we're drawing 8 amps. But let's hit the brake lights. We're up to 12 or 13 amps. So now we know how much power all the parking lights take and then how much it adds when we trigger the brake lights. I'm going to replace just the parking and brake light with an LED. We'll do that on both sides and we'll see how much of a difference just changing this one bulb makes. And I imagine if I were to convert all of the lights on the car to LEDs, we would be drawing almost no power for the lights. These LEDs, just like the headlights, are from vintage car LEDs. And if you want to save 10% on any of their lights, use the code thisweekwithcars when you check out. Let's install them and see how good they are. There are no external fasteners on these lenses, so we'll have to access these from inside the trunk. Luckily, the rear panel has been cut away on both sides. So it's really easy to access the back sides of the lights. I'm not completely sure why it's cut there, but I think it has something to do with when they installed the batteries. They may have had to install some equipment, and it just made more sense to cut these panels up. Not really sure. But to get to the bulb, it's pretty easy. Let's take a look at the difference between the incandescent bulb and the LED. You can see the pins match up. The LEDs do have much bigger pads here, and it is slightly longer. So depending on your housing, possibly the LEDs might not fit. But usually they have a lot of space for the incandescent bulb so it doesn't melt the housing. I don't think these LEDs are going to get that hot, so they could be closer to your lens. I'm also told that this is going to actually have red light that's going to be emitted from it. So let's turn it on just in the socket and see what it looks like. Okay, this is very bright and very red. I don't think you can get a sense in the camera just how bright this light actually is. I can't even look at it, but when I'm looking at the camera screen, it doesn't look as bright as it is in person. You definitely couldn't look at the end of this. This is very, very bright. Let's hit the brakes and see how much brighter it gets. I think even in the brightest sun, they're definitely going to see when I've hit the brakes. Let's put it back in the housing and then see how it looks against the other side, which I haven't changed yet. The LED is on the right and the incandescent bulb is on the left. That is a huge difference. The LED really fills up the housing on this side and it actually looks a lot better than it does on that side. And I'm not sure in the camera if you can tell how good this looks in person. Now I'm going to hit the brakes and we'll see how much of a difference that is. I have to say that looks great. And if it takes a lot less power than the old bulbs, this is really fantastic. Let's turn the parking lights on again. We were at seven. Now we're down to six amps, five to six amps. Let's hit the brake lights. And with the brake lights, we were at 13 before, and it looks like the LEDs are actually not really increasing, if anything, by one amp when I'm hitting the brake light. 
that's a huge improvement. I think most of our power is going to the incandescent bulbs that I haven't changed yet. One really important thing when switching to LEDs is your flasher unit might not work anymore. The lights may not draw enough power to trigger them and you'll have to go to a solid state flasher unit. Let's turn on the flashers on this car and see if they still work. Looks like the lights do still draw enough power. And my flasher unit is working. But if I replace the front ones, I may have to go to a solid state unit. Next, I want to fix something that's kept me from driving this more this summer. So you can see this is the electric motor right here. We have this ducting and this cools the motor down. It comes up to the front of the car and then there's a blower fan located down there. The blower fan has gone bad. I don't think it ever worked as long as I've had the car. But when I was driving this car, when it was really hot out, there's actually a light that comes on letting me know that the motor's getting hot. And once it does get hot, you're supposed to flip this switch right here which will manually turn on that fan and cool the motor down. I have checked that the wiring for this does work. It does supply 12 volt power up to that fan, but the fan is locked up and no longer works. Looking from underneath the car, here's the blower fan. It kind of looks like it's the normal blower fan for a heater core, possibly even a Datsun blower fan that's been repurposed to go up here. I did disconnect the wiring so that nothing else would be damaged. The first step will be to get this out of here. To get the rest of this, I think it'll be easier just to remove the grill. I must have put this in here before bolting the bumper back up. It, they had fabricated this entire bracket just to hold the cooling fan for the electric motor. Even had some little rubber isolators or something here to keep the vibration down. Pretty amazing the extent they went to on this car. Well, here it is. Doesn't spin real well anymore. I don't see any labels, so I'm not sure where this came from. They got this off the shelf. It's some generic thing or if it's off an automobile, not real sure. Over on the right is the old unit, and this is what I'm going to replace it with. I use these a lot on my race cars to blow fresh air around the cockpit. And as you can see, much more compact, should be easier to install, should blow a lot more air, and this should keep the car going no matter how hot the temperature is outside. Using the old bracket here, it looks like the bolt pattern it's even going to work out so I can mount it to this bracket. Since everything has been around so much battery acid over its life, I am going to put some anti-seize on these bolts before I put them back in. Now let's see if this will fit. I don't think that's coming out. 
It's real tight against the battery mount that's right here. Now let's hook it up. I'll turn the switch on. We'll see if it works. Well, nothing happened. I'm not sure why, because as you can see, I do have 14 volts here across the wires that are supplied to the fan. I've even disconnected this to make sure that it wasn't tweaking that. And the fan is still not working. So I don't know if I was sent a defective one. Maybe I'll connect this to another battery source. Connecting it to another source works. Let's try another ground. This black wire is connected straight to the battery. Still nothing. So for some reason, our power circuit cannot supply enough power to run this fan. It makes me wonder if the original one was working. I'm gonna connect another power source here. Okay, this fan does work. I would be interested to know what's under this connection. Maybe we have a splice right here that has gone bad. Still not enough current to power the fan. When you have a circuit that's running a high current device such as a fan, it's never good to connect it the way this was done, which is straight through a switch. I'm going to change this to work the way it should, and that's by putting in a relay. My switch will trigger this relay to activate, which will then supply power directly from the battery over to the fan, alleviating all of that high current flowing through the switch and the original circuit. The original power wire for the fan is right here and you can see it tucked in right here so I can easily add in a relay over here tie it in with my wires and job done I have the relay in place now and the really cool thing about this is I can trigger this relay from anything now I can install a temperature sensor directly on the motor that would automatically turn the fan on and off for me there's all kinds of ways that I could trigger this fan now I haven't hit the switch yet. Let's hit it and see if the fan works. And it does. Before I put the grill back on, I wanted to show one last look at this. And I am going to keep the original fan just in case the car ever should be returned completely original. I didn't modify anything. Let's put this fan on here. That's going to be it for today. This car is really coming along. There are a couple more changes that I want to make to make this car so that I can drive it every single day. So if you want to make sure that you see those videos, comment below and click subscribe.